Well, good morning, sand trackers and barefooters. It's Jonathan Brake here again for our latest Tuesday live mentoring moment on Facebook. And uh, great to have you all here and hoping, uh, hoping you're doing well. The week's off to a good start. I actually asked my wife last night, um, you know, what we were doing for the weekend and she reminded me it was Monday. <laughs> so I'm ready for the weekend. I don't know about you guys, but uh, beautiful, beautiful weather here right now. I'm, I'm in, uh, as, as you know, I'm, I live in the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains in Western North Carolina. You know, it's getting into the high 20s, early 30s quite humid and so we're definitely full swing into summer in fact I'm standing outside in my backyard right now and uh, it's it's muggy so we're going to have this call done by the time the sun comes across here and uh, I'll be out of here and back inside in the air conditioning a lot of work to do a lot of training today anyway as I said hope you are well uh, great to have you all here this morning so today we're or, and and this week we're talking about marketing now marketing is something that uh well, I know a little bit about. <laughs> so when I, when I went to university back in the early uh, <clears throat> 90s, <laughs> um, you know, I came out with a, a, what was called a multi-faculty degree, which was basically useful for nothing, uh, except I knew a bunch of stuff. And, uh, and so I had a choice. I could either then, you know, I didn't have, I had lots of choices, but then I thought, okay, so I want to do a master's. And, uh, and I had the choice at, at, at that time to do a master's in either advertising and public relations or in human resources. And I always say, given the way human resources has gone today, uh, where we kind of nickname them the business prevention department, um, I'm glad I chose marketing. And, and that really did set me up well. I then went through a whole series. I worked for major corporations. I also worked for startups in, in the marketing space, uh, launching products, you know, helping people innovate products, developing marketing strategies, developing brand, all that sort of thing. And so that's where I actually bought and sold my businesses. That's where I had some great successes and also some losses. So it's a part of the world that I really understand well. So along that journey, we developed a, a process we call Star Marketing. And, uh, and so I wanted to share that with you today. And uh, um, if, if you join up with us, if you're not already a member and you connect with us and say, hey, I want a copy of that document, um, I'll send you a one pager. It's a really simple outline. One of the things you'll learn about being around me is I love simplicity <laughs> and I uh, like keeping it, keeping it pretty straight and plain. So what does STAR stand for? It stands for strategy, tactics, actions, results. And you know, over the years, as I've done more than just marketing, you know, now I'm more in the leadership game and in strategic consulting and helping people develop broader and bigger plans for their company, not just their marketing strategies. Um, over that season, I've, um, you know, that I've been able to, um, you know, use that as a broader business strategy tool. So I'm going to talk about it in the marketing context today, but you're welcome to take this and say, okay, so when we think about strategy, we think about tactics, we think about actions and results. Well, that's just a business plan, right? And so, so don't be afraid to use it elsewhere, even use it in project-based things. You know, if you're just doing one, one uh, maybe a launch or maybe a pitch to investors or whatever it might be. So this STAR process, uh, I've used it across the board in terms of companies, so it applies everywhere. Um, so let's, let's dive into each of the sections of that. So the first of all, so, so it's strategy, tactics, actions, results are the four main areas, spells S-T-A-R, STAR, okay? And uh, <laughs> excuse me while my cat comes rubbing around my legs. That's different. And, uh, and so, um, sorry, I just had to move it away. But um, yeah, so, so when we look at strategy, all right, so this is an interesting one because I'm going to talk about it from a marketing strategy point of view, which is probably more tactical than strategic, all right, but, but when we look at marketing strategy, um, I, oh, come on, Facebook, all right, uh, sorry, Anna, I'm just seeing these come up and uh, I'm, I'm delighted to hear you say that, but not, not for your pain but because obviously we can help and it is one of the hardest parts. So, so when we think about strategy, all right, so the strategy kind of tells us where we're going. What's the big picture? What's the outcome? What are the things that we want to do? All right, so we're not now saying, okay, uh, sorry, when we say, well, what do we want to achieve? All right, so when I develop the strategy piece in a star marketing report, uh, I would look at some things like, obviously the first thing we're going to look at is a snapshot. Where am I at now? What's the market look like? 
What's my state of play? Am I making any sales? Am I successful in areas? What's working? What's not? All those sorts of things. And I will put some fundamental questions through that. So when we look at the strategy, I need to know the mission and vision and values. I need to know, uh, you know what vehicles you're using to, to what products, what services, all those things. We need to know those things, right? That's part of the strategy. And so we need to know what we're going to market with. And also, so then I'm also looking at, okay, so what's the incumbent stuff? So what are we, what are we happy with? And what are we unhappy with is, is the things we need to change. If it's a new product, maybe we're looking at the way other people have done it. Okay, so also inside the strategic is things like my competitors, all right? Now, I've heard this a lot in the startup space. I don't have any competitors. Well, I've got two problems with that. One is that that's not true, <laughs> um, but, but it's, it's usually that you're not looking hard enough or you're avoiding your competitors, which is, which is foolish in, in market. It's foolish in business to avoid your competitors. Um, the second thing is, is that you may not have a market. All right, now, that doesn't mean, now you might have something unique. Obviously we look at disruption and all that sort of thing, but even if you think about, you know, we always use the same old poster child for disruption like Uber, right? Even Uber, there was still, a t there was an incumbent system. There was a taxi system in place. We understood that you could hire a car, have a driver come and pick you up and take you somewhere and you'd pay for that, right? We understood that model. So. When we talk about disruption, we've got to be careful about how far we go with that because often that's an excuse to say, well, there's no competitors, all right? And that's not true, all right? So, so understanding our competitors, looking at our competitor analysis and being honest, what is it that we like that they're doing and what is it that we do different, better? What is it that we will do that, that will, will uh, interest our market? What is it about us that brings a unique thing, okay? Then we might also in the strategic look at messages. All right, so when we think about messages, a uh, couple of things that are really critical here. Always have your, your elevator pitch ready. Okay, so that, that um, 90 second, 120 second monologue of how you pitch your company, how you get intrigue, so you get invited to the next level, to the next meeting or to the next pitch event or to the next whatever it might be. You just, it, it, the, 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 the elevator pitch is all about piquing the interest of whoever's in front of you at that point in time. So I encourage, uh, when I used to do these marketing plans, I'd encourage my clients to have an elevator pitch, you know, just that, just that two or three paragraphs of, and make it as intriguing as possible. Then there are other messages. What are the things we wanna say on our website and how do we go about that? And I've got an information flow where I look at, you know, for example, once we start getting onto websites, um, I could go and look at the average website today and say, look, you know, most websites talk about everything that I do everything that I am, you know, like I, I used to be in the graphic design space when we were in branding and all the graphic designers go, we believe this and we believe design should be this and we like doing these things and we're and like, the market doesn't care, <laughs> all right? How are you gonna serve them? So your message needs to pitch back to your client and we could probably, uh, it's a pleasure, Anna. Um, yeah, look, happy to um, have a chat with you uh, at another time with about this too. So don't, don't be afraid to reach out, just send me a message and we can maybe grab a call and talk through it. It'd be my pleasure. Um, and so, yeah, so how do we, how do we uh, really gauge those messages? And then how are we testing those messages? And, and we'll come back to the R in, in uh, STAR in a minute, which is about your results. Okay, so the strategy has my snapshot. It has my where I'm at. It has my overall view and vision and direction and, and what are the objectives I want to get from marketing or from the things that I'm doing. It has my competitive analysis. It has an understanding of product. It has an understanding of you know place and how am I going to get things. It, it, it has those things in place. Okay, so that's my strategy. Then I will then turn that into, oh, it will also have my target markets. All right, so we did talk about targeting uh, quite a few calls back, uh, quite a few um, sessions back where we talked about, you know, the, the market being big enough to make money out of, you know, the market identifying as a market some way. Uh, maybe not as identifies today, but it identifies as a market, you know, the market um, also, you know, um, wanting to buy your product, you know, that they can, they can do that, okay. So, so we talked about, and then so obviously target markets, and I usually set two or three good targets. Um, I'll, I'll maybe have three and usually there's a primary and a secondary which are where 95% of our marketing spend and effort is put. And then the third one I call the EMADs which is uh, every man and his dog. And they're the people that you pick up by accident and you may find an intriguing market in there but we need to leave them in the EMAD space until they become a critical piece, right? Because it's so easy as a startup to just go, oh, hang on, we've got this, we've got this interesting thing going on over here 
I'm going to go after that. And I, I, I'm constantly doing this to start. It's kind of like, okay, stay, stay, you know, it's like talking to my dog, right? But that stay, focus, stop, you know? And so because you see something intriguing over there, it's, it's like they go off after it. So it's, it's about understanding those markets and really working them, but also being aware that you may have targeted the wrong market. I mean, that's, that's possible, but not at the first whim of there's a whiff somewhere else, okay? So market targeting is really important. So, so they're all the strategic considerations, okay? So we've got our strategy, we've got our snapshot, we know who we are, we know where we wanna go with it all, we know our competitors, we understand our messaging, we understand our products, we understand you know, the targets we're after, all those sorts of things, so we've got that formulated. Then we move into the, uh, I don't know how to jump to fourth, then we move into the second piece of, of STAR, which is tactics, okay? Now this is where you're gonna get a little bit of a view of my brain. So what happens in my brain? My brain basically functions to complexity theory, all right? I just love just data, just scramble it up, I don't care. Just let's get it all down, let's figure it out, let's put it all there, and then we order it, okay? So complexity theory is, is yeah, I mean, it's, it's a whole bunch of things, but it's basically out of, out of chaos and out of complexity you know, human beings like to seek order and patterns and things like that, and our brains are wired that way. So the tactic piece is, is basically everything we need to do to market, all right? And this is, a, this is not just the what can I afford to do, it's your wish list as well, all right? I hope you can't hear my chickens too loudly in the background. They sound like they're having a bad morning. <laughs> but uh, I've got, I've got uh, 18 chickens in a, in a run just beside me here, so, you know, this is always uh, mentoring moments with the chickens. Um, and if you don't have chickens and you've got a yard that you can put chickens in, they're amazing pets. They're the quirkiest animals. How's that for word of mouth marketing? <laughs> but anyway, so when we start to think about, uh, we start to think about tactics, okay, I, I take four, uh, four views of tactics. First of all, there's my brand, all right? Second of all, there are my lead generation tactics, which is probably going to be 80% of the, you know, 80% of the tactics that I do. The third one is sales processes. All right, and the fourth one is relationship maintenance. All right, so as you can see, it's quite a, <laughs> thanks Anna, it is a nice spot. But, uh, um, and so as you can see, you know, you go through this process. Um, so you start with brand. So brand are all the considerations I have. So that does include things like my logo and my brand feel. Um, one of the things I like to do, it's a, it it'd probably get me kicked out of the average marketing school, but I don't really care. Um, is they talk about image and branding a lot, right? And people go, well, what is brand and how do I value brand and what is branding and all that sort of thing. And so here's just a really simple way to think about it. Okay, the brand is the markers, it's the colors, it's the fonts, it's the words, it's the experience, it's all that sort of thing, right? The image is what your target market thinks of it. So if I mention McDonald's, we all have different thoughts about McDonald's. If you're in Australia, it's a, it's a very different experience to say here in America. Here in America, it's kind of the butt of takeaway food. And uh, in Australia, it's not awesome, but you, know, you can get you know, deli foods and things like that. If I mention uh, Walmart, okay, or if I mention Sears, or if I mention um, Tiffany's, whatever it might be, you know, you're gonna have different thoughts and different experiences. So, so obviously, that's where we're starting to think about, okay, so what kind of brand do we wanna create? And it's actually okay to be the price club, right? But do the price club well. There's some really great examples of price club around the world, particularly in the airline industry. There's actually there's some bad ones in the airline industry as well. But one of the good ones here in America is Southwest Airlines, where you could argue they're not exactly just price club anymore, but, but they, it was all about making flying fair. That's, that's core to their values. And again, that comes back to their values, right? We can talk about that. But, uh, but so your marketing and, and your brand first of all, reflects your strategy, it reflects the values, it reflects all the things you've discovered, and it reflects maybe what the market might be missing. But then the image is gonna be what people think about it, and that's gonna come down to the experience you provide, okay? So, so then we move into the second piece of, of tactics there, which is lead generation. Now this, particularly in the startup world, this is where we're gonna spend the majority of our time, okay? Lead generation, all right? Generating leads, <laughs> let's keep it simple, <laughs> right? The Price Club, haven't heard of that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, it's basically where, you know, we have, um, you know, it's effectively things are provided in bulk. So over here um, in, in America, we have like Sam's Club and Costco in, in the, you know, you pay a lot 
sorry, you don't pay a lot. You pay less per price, but you know they're selling it in bulk. And so uh, Price Club is where price is important, but then they also need to provide a, a customer experience as well. So, so anyway, we get, we're now down to the, the second in the tactics here, which is lead generation, okay? So lead generation is your critical piece, all right? This is where you're gathering in people, this is where you're gathering leads. Now, the funny thing about this whole loop of things is that even though I'm laying it out in a linear pattern, um, there's a lot going on here. For example, I've got a client right now doing market research and, and pa as part of their market research, I said, well, don't be afraid to market while you're doing it, all right? You know, they provide you with opportunities, they provide you with leads, those sorts of things. And they're like, oh, I didn't think we could do that in market research. It's like, yeah, you can. So your market research is marketing, so it's lead generation in itself. So it can be a tactic. Now, we could also then say it's in the results section as well. So, so in tactics, we're really looking at what are all the things I need to do to generate leads? What have I got to do online, offline? How do I connect? You know, do, does, does a lot of my leads come through word of mouth? There's a whole other thing where we can talk about. I, I, do, this, um, I do this workshop called Taming the Wombat. <laughs> now, a wombat's a cute little Australian animal, and a fun fact is the only animal in the world that does square poos. It's a true story. So they're the only ones that literally crap bricks or briquettes. So why is that important? It's actually not. But taming the wombat, wombat is one of those few animals. They're beautiful creatures. They're actually quite trainable and quite tameable, although you know, you're not supposed to have them as pets. Um, but they, so I use it. So we use this thing in advertising. <laughs> we use this thing in advertising in Australia called wombat, which actually is just an acronym for word of mouth best advertising technique. <laughs> and so, so many startups I come to or used to come to in my marketing days and they say, oh, you know, we just, all our marketing's word of mouth. You know, we don't need a strategy. We don't need to think about, you know, marketing is just all word of mouth. It's like, okay, so who, who's actually controlling your word of mouth? Who's actually, how are you actually creating a strategy so that that word of mouth is saying the right thing? And so, so that's the, that's the, one of the things in there that we kind of think about in terms of the, the tactical component of lead generation is, is we use this wombat strategy. And uh, so, so that's, that's part of, so, so you can line up as many tactics as you like in there in terms of the lead generation, all right? The next one, which sits in the middle, which is interesting, is, is um, it, it's, it's the toughest one for business. And funnily enough, it's the toughest one for sales guys, and that is the sales processes, right? In our strategy, in our tactical plan, we need to have an outline of what our sales processes are gonna be. Do we have online forms where people can pay? Do I have, you know, if I'm going out and pitching to somebody, do I have a term sheet, you know, in terms of, of pitching to an investor? Or do I, have, do I have things that actually move me towards whatever the sale is? Now, the sale isn't necessarily closing a deal, right? The sale may be just moving the thing to the next level. Um, and if you want to look at some examples of that, there's a great book out there called Spin Selling, which kind of talks about, you know, you're not just trying to close the sale day one. Uh, sometimes with investors too, you're not just trying to close the deal day one. You want to move the relationship to the next level so that there's more value, there's more things you can be doing there. So, so this is the sales processes. What do I need? What do I have to have online? What sheets do I need? What documents? What, what you know, do I have a point of sale? Do I make it easy for my clients to do a sale, you know? Uh, yesterday we had to get some work done on our car and, and we were here at home and the guy said, oh, you know, if you want to pay by credit card, here's a website. We went on the website, pff, paid, done, before we even got there, you know. So, um, so you know, people make it, and, and so this is where when we're thinking about in our business, how do we make it as easy as possible for my target, be it a customer, investor, whatever, to go to that next step? to go to the next level. And that also requires me before I go into that place to know what I want from that person, right? Hopefully there's not too much wind noise. Uh, Linda, let me know that it just started to pick up a bit. But um, so, so that's the sales processes. And then the fourth one in the tactics area is relationship maintenance, all right? We all know the stats, right? It's way easier to keep a client than it is to find a new one. It's way cheaper, that's for sure. Sometimes it's not easier, <laughs> depending on the client. So if we're doing all the right things, so often our lead generation can fold over into, 
relationship maintenance. So relationship maintenance is, is my follow-up. It's the experience the customer has with my product. It's, it's the, the ongoing experience the customer has with me or the, the investor has with me. It's those sorts of things. What are the ongoing experiences we want them to have and how do we want them to have them, okay? And so what does that create in me? How does that, and, and how do we need to keep adding to that to build the relationship? So for example, you know, in the US here and, and I know in Australia as well, we use Amazon, right? And Amazon Prime had, you know, it started out just Amazon and you just, you could pay a bit extra and get, you know, you get your two day shipping or your free shipping or whatever, you pay extra for free shipping. That sounds like a socialist plot there. <laughs> but, um, but then, you know, how do you, how do you then, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. So we would, we would you know, you'd, you'd pay extra and that's something. So what they did was they brought in Amazon Prime, which basically, firstly locks me in. It gives me access to a whole bunch of things like TV and radio and bits and pieces here. Um, but it also gives me two day free shipping on anything that has Prime listed against it. Okay, which is, you know, it's good. We've ordered enough stuff on Amazon that, that that actually works. So they thought about the relationship. How do we enhance the relationship? And they're making money out of it too. Because there's months where I don't get anything shipped at all. And really that TV is probably not costing them much for me to be there. So, so relationship maintenance becomes really, really important in that one. So four tactics that we need to, so all I encourage you to do in that section is just, just dream, just come up with every tactic you can think of. I'm gonna do sales letters, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write out my website, I'm gonna create blogs, I'm gonna uh, create a sales form, I'm going to do a newsletter, or I'm gonna connect with my clients, I'm gonna call a client a week, or whatever, whatever the, and, and how you, but put them into those groups. So brand, lead generation, sales processes, relationship maintenance, put them into those groups. All right, so now we've got complexity. <laughs> because <laughs> you've got a whole bunch of stuff sitting there. You've got your strategy, you've got all your tactics, and you're looking at this thing going, whoa, <laughs> this is big, all right? And, or maybe not, maybe you're lucky and it's only small, but the next step is now we start to organize, all right? And this is the bit, this is where the magic really happens, and it's just simple. So this is the third in star, which is the A, all right, which is action, all right? And so... All we're doing here is creating action plans. This is just project management 101. Uh, Gantt charts, flow diagrams, whatever it is that works for you in terms of how you organize yourself. Putting things into calendars, automating processes, those sorts of things. So all the action steps. What are the next things you need to do? I tend to break them down into two lots of actions, all right? So there's the one-off stuff. So for example, if I'm designing a logo, well, I hope I'm not designing a logo every week, all right? If you are, then Go back to your vision, values, your purpose, all those sorts of things because you're confused or your product or your market or whatever. But, but there's, there's a, an element of that. Hopefully I'm not redesigning my website every few weeks. That's not precluding the fact that I might add to it or I might add content, but I'm not changing it fundamentally, okay? And there are certain things that I'm doing that are one-offs. I'm creating stationery. I'm creating uh, newsletter templates. I'm creating maybe advertising templates. Or ma I don't know what it is. Maybe it's it's just the consistency of the messages, okay? We wanna really workshop those and, and work through those as one of your lead generation strategies. It can be a great strategy to just do a, just do a group testing on messages. So, so this is the action piece. So then there's the one-off actions. And then there's your ongoing actions, all right? And this is where most of us start to fall down because we, we start to just let things slide. Okay, so um, in, the, in the words of kind of Stephen Covey and guys like that, these become your Q2 activities, right? The stuff that's important, but it's not necessarily urgent today, all right? Once it becomes urgent, it moves into Q1 <laughs> because it's important and urgent and it's often too late to really get in and, and mark it well. So this is where you can start to think about your week and say, okay, what are the two or three things I need to do this week? And, and what are the two or three things I need to be doing on a regular basis just to connect, to make noise, to, to meaningfully connect with my market, to build relationships, to generate leads, uh, to improve my sales process, all those sorts of things. So that's the, the ongoing piece, all right? So, so that's then your, what do I do every week? What do I do every month? So I, I, I call them rhythms. So you're creating rhythms of marketing, all right? So you're not doing the same thing every single week, but you're allocating your time rather than just running after everything. You're allocating time to, to then think about what your action points are gonna be, all right? The fourth one, and this needs this, this only needs to be reasonably brief. The fourth one is um, uh, results. Okay, <laughs> sounds like I almost forgot it there. <laughs> now, as I said, don't treat this as a linear exercise. 
okay? For example, if you've got an existing business and you're starting to think about um, you know, new product lines and things like that and you're applying this star process to it, you may be testing and measuring that amongst your team, for example, and how does the team feel about it and how are they engaging? So that's gathering results all the time and you need to adjust and, and adapt. The same when we go to market, all right? The same when we talk to investors, we need to adjust and adapt as we go along. And so, so results are not something we just gather at the end, all right? They're things we gather all the way along. For example, if I'm doing, um, and you see this on things like um, if you use uh, MailChimp or something like that, um, there are some great, uh, there's some great software that helps you do things like A-B testing, okay? A-B testing is basically, I'm gonna send out two uh, promotional pieces, be it sales letters, be it a newsletter, be it whatever. Um, I'm gonna send it out to a, to a market. I'm gonna split the market in the middle and I'm gonna see what I get back. And I'm gonna then run full tilt with the one I get the best results from, okay? Just think simple things like that. So what are the results you're getting? And measure, measure, measure all the way along. Keep an eye on things. Now, one of the things, if you are more in that perfectionist tendency is just to be very careful that you don't, um, <laughs> you don't take it too far and then you lock yourself down into paralysis analysis, okay? So, so make sure you're measuring results, make sure you're understanding, even getting other people around and, and getting feedback. So all very, very important. Part of relationship maintenance, for example, is making sure you have customer surveys, making sure you're getting feedback from investors, making sure you're getting uh, understanding from your suppliers, how you can be better with them. Because all of these things matter in terms of creating a great business and creating a great outcome for you and your clients. So, so that's the results piece. As I said, measure it all the way through. It's, it does sit at the end because it just, well, star wouldn't work otherwise. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it is something we think about towards the end, but obviously measuring those results is extremely important and we must do those as we're going. And it's okay to find out you're doing it all wrong. In fact, it's great to find that you're doing it all wrong because, and this is often, we just like, oh, I won't measure the results. I got a bit of a feeling, uh, but we really what we're fearing is rejection, all right? So, so, that's, uh, so that's where you know, we need to understand that results are good. We need to be gathering results all the time. You know, I always say to my, for example, my hospitality customers, have a card that people can fill out really easily. Offer them a reward. You know, um, a lot of places online, if you're doing stuff online, offer them a reward for results, those sorts of things. Things that you can do that are low cost to you but really build your customer loyalty because they see a business that cares about them, that cares about customers and it's worth doing business with. All right, so that's the star process, strategy, tactics, actions, results. Uh, if you come to the end of this and jumped in and you're intrigued by it, this video will be up uh, in, in a few minutes, live, uh, up, up as a recording. Um, but um, that's, that's where we're at today. I hope that's been useful. I hope that's been helpful. As you're starting to think through your marketing, and marketing is a big thing, um, as Anna said, and, and many have said, I mean, I've been in this game now for 25 years, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's a challenge, you know, particularly if we're really good at what we do, really good at our product. You know, I work amongst a lot of engineers, a lot of technology people, those sorts of things. It's like, it's like marketing's kind of the icky word, um, and they'll spend half a million dollars developing a product and then $10 marketing it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, so that's, that's partly what we're here for. You know, we have a, a, a huge understanding myself and Mark in particular, and Linda does as well. Linda basically is the brains behind a lot of all the promotion and stuff you're seeing on here. So, so we understand the space very well, okay? And so it's important that you reach out to us. That's why we have this group. Uh, that's why we have this community. It's why we have the co-working events as well, uh, which by the way, um, will be happening again this week. Please watch the page for times and dates and, um, so yeah, we'd love to see you all of those too. And over the next few weeks, we're gonna start engaging some of our mentors as well. We had Tammy on a few weeks ago. We're gonna start engaging more of our mentors. We've started talking to them it's just, because they're so busy, it takes them a while to line up <laughs> and, uh, and have them on. So they'd be just, you, you can just pepper them with questions. These are, these are live calls, you call in on Zoom so you can talk. It's not just about like this where we're doing a one way. Okay, well, if there's nothing else there today, I can't see any questions coming through. Um, it's been fantastic chatting with you. I hope that's been a useful conversation. Reach out to me or to Mark or to Linda if you need to, if you need to uh, talk through your marketing, or if you just want some ideas, or you just want to chat, uh, we're always available. Uh, we always encourage you to come over and join us in the Sandtrax Club. Um, all the membership details and so forth are on the Business in Bare Feet website. That's businessinbarefeet.com. Uh, come on over there and join us, and that's, that's what we're here for. 
So, um, but we're also here available on the Santrax group, which obviously is free and uh, we can help you out. So I appreciate you all being here and, and those who have watched since, um, great having you here. Please reach out. We look forward to talking to you again next Tuesday. Have a great one. I'm Jonathan Brake as always. Enjoy the journey.